was stationed at um, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I think I was maybe 24, 25 years of age at that time. Um, I was second lieutenant uh, in the United States Army. I feel like, I felt as if um, I had arrived, you know, I had achieved a, a certain level of success. And I um, thought I had made my mom proud. And then all of them, out of the blue, um, I received a phone call, um, leave from my mom saying, hey, your father wants to, wants to see you. You know, I had been, you know, going through life, um, you know, just trying to do my very best. And then out of nowhere, I get this request. And I really had to uh, absorb that and, and just try to figure out what all that, that whole thing meant. Um, and then I thought about it and I said, well, this would be my op opportunity to kind of unload on them to get some stuff I've been holding for all these years off my chest for a mom's sake, for my sake, for my siblings' sake. Um, I would give it to them. Um, you know, as, as a soldier, as an adult, as a man, um, I would finally uh, get my chance to face him. Um, well, first of all, pulling up to a prison is kind of an um, overwhelming experience within itself. Um, you see the barbed wire fence. You, you walk through the, uh, the metal doors and, you know, they search you, you know, just like they do now, going uh, through customs or getting ready to go in the airport. Um, and so that's a, that's a process within itself. Um, and I go through the metal doors and it opens up to this uh, cafeteria type uh, setting. And here I am. Um, I'm looking around at the other inmates with their, with their loved ones. Uh, but I'm waiting on, on the man that I hadn't seen in many years. Um, I got this picture in my head of what I think he looks like. You know, I'm thinking he's that young person I saw in that, um, that photo when he and my mom got married. You know, probably the same age as me. Uh, as if time stood still for him. So I'm waiting on that guy to uh, emerge from behind that metal door. And when the door opens, and he comes out. Um, I didn't. I didn't see the the picture that I had in my head all those years. Um, time you know, hadn't been kind to him. I don't think. Um, it seemed like he was kind of uh, beat down by life a little bit. But as he approached me, immediately he hit me with the you know hello son and. I think I just kind of melted for a moment back to that that little boy again, um, you know, with the with the son um, title. It just brings you back, you know. That's still my dad. But um, we we took a seat and we began to have you know some general conversation. But I still had so many questions, so many questions. Um, I think I wanted him to say that uh, he was sorry. I never got that, but then somewhere in the course of that conversation, um, I realized it really wasn't about me. It was about um, um, telling him that I love him and I, and I forgive him, and I got the opportunity. And as soon as I said that I, I forgive you, um, I felt a release because I believe uh, I believe God is love, and love is stronger than hate. Um, I don't know if you ever tried to hate somebody, but it's almost impossible. I don't think I have that, that hate gene. And so um, um, that day, um, definitely love was stronger than hate, and I chose to, to forgive him. And I think that was the beginning of the healing process for me. My father, um, um, 
he had my contact information, but um, oftentimes he would have to go into uh, the mental uh, institution uh, portion of the prison for uh, you know some time, and so I would lose contact with him. But um, he he had a counselor that would reach out to me from time to time when my father needed me. Um, it had been a while since I seen him, and uh, sure enough, uh, his counselor called me. And he told me that my, my father was in a in a bad state, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, and he needed to see a family member. He needed to see, um, you know, one of his kids. Of course, I jumped at the opportunity to see my father um, at that particular time. Um, but I saw it as a win-win because I still had questions. Um, different questions uh, at this point but um, here we are you know back at at the prison and um, I know he's not the same person you know mentally physically but when he uh, appeared from uh, behind that metal door again and I, I wasn't expecting what I saw um, I mean um, he was in a bad state um, he, he walked uh, you know, with a with a limp, his um, his hand was clutched as if he had you know had a stroke, suffered a stroke, um, shaking, and he walked with a little stoop, and um, it, it made me sad. It made me sad. I mean, I tried to you know um, stay focused, but it, it made me sad as he approached me. I still wanted to know. Um, what happened with the uh, with the fire, um, and I also wanted to to know uh, more about him as a as a person. You know, maybe some some of the health issues and family stuff of that nature. Um, do you know what happened? Um, you know, were you responsible for the fire? But he always, you know. Didn't, didn't want to go there, you know, with that, the whole fire scene. And finally, I, you know, I, I realized that um, maybe this chapter was over. Um, he had mentioned to me before that he wanted me to, to help him um, get out of prison, um, come to his parole hearing, hire a lawyer for him, and, and, um, and so when he began to ask me the questions about the lawyer, um, I feel like uh, this was my opportunity to give him a little taste of freedom. I mean, he had been locked up um, for over 40 years at that point, and you know, by his um, his physical state, um, I thought maybe that would be my last time seeing him. So. Um, I said, uh, let me just allow him to escape um, these prison walls, um, emotionally, mentally. And I thought maybe through my conversation, I can I can pull that off. And so I began to tell him, you know, about the lawyer that I was going to get for him. And I could see it in his eyes that, you know, he, he, he kind of. Uh, he was going there emotionally, you know, just making that escape. And um, I got a place for you um, where we lived in Atlanta at the time, and I got a room for you, and we go fishing with the uh, with your grandkids. And um, man, I, I can see a smile on his face. And um, and so that that was the that was the point of. Uh, that um, that visit uh, during that that part of the conversation, just just to give him a little taste of freedom that one last time. Um, at the end of um, the last visit, I, I felt that peace. All the other stuff really didn't matter. Um, I understood that. Um, um, you know, a father needs a son. Um, son needs a father. I took I took that lesson with me, and I was at peace with it. Um, 
in a strange way, I, I, I miss him. I, I wish I could have one more conversation with him. <laughs>